Hi, welcome. So the scientific method. So when you're jumping into physics, or maybe possibly any science at some point, I hope that you're going to run into this scientific method and someone will introduce it to you. And if not, then I hope that this video at least gives you some sense of this concept of the scientific method and kind of what the purpose of it is. Well, the purpose mainly is that, you know, we humans are kind of curious, curious features um, or creatures, I guess. And so our kind of creative mind starts to ask quite a lot of questions from the observations that we see around us. And the scientific method, I don't believe that it was invented by a particular person at all. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Um, so I think that it was just kind of a collective way of being able to uh, put a process in um, at least some kind of a systematic way of being able to have our observations, okay, to be questioned, and then to in some way have some way to figure out an explanation for those observations. And, you know, so what is a nice checklist of items that we can do to be able to answer these observations. And for science, it is pretty much about the natural world that we are trying to discuss, okay, of these things that happen. And then why are they happening? How are they happening? When are they happening? Or when did they happen? And we can throw in many other questions within there. So the idea is, you know, you do observe something in the natural world that you either see or hear, okay, or sense or any of the senses that we do have that you use, or maybe it is something else, okay, so not everybody is, you know, blessed with sight, okay, or maybe sound, so other experimentations can be done, and then we kind of sense these things, and then we can say, all right, so what's happening here? Can we explain it to the best of our ability? And actually, at least the way that I like the scientific method and what it does is it does provide us in some way, some kind of results or explanations that later on we can use and then we can repeat kind of the experimentations behind to be able to explain the same phenomenon. So a phenomenon is some kind of a observation, and I'm going to be referring to kind of natural observations that do happen. So as you can see here, I kind of put in these four items okay, within here. Now, this is the simplified scientific method, but I think it does a job, especially as you're just being introduced, possibly, you know, going into physics, and you're going to be studying quite a lot of the results and theories and then trying to apply them okay to various questions um, you know maybe in grade 11 or maybe in your introductory physics class so this will do the job okay and as you can see there on top so i put we as humans will observe something and then we will have some kind of a question now to give you a sense you know and if you take a step backwards one of the more famous things that we have, at least from Newton's point of view, is, you know, this, this concept of an apple, you know, falling down from the tree and then hitting Newton, okay, on the head. I don't know if it's actually fully out true or not, okay, but let's imagine that it was. So, you know, so something falls down and then, you know, Newton starts to think about, okay, well, you know, why didn't this apple actually float upwards? Now, you might say, well, that's ridiculous, you know, like, of course, it's going to kind of come downwards, you know, anything that I'm going to put up, you know, I let it go and it's going to start the dropping down. Well, you know, Newton was wondering, you know, how is this happening? And, you know, these things are consistently repeatable, right? It doesn't matter what object, you know, if it's an apple. I mean, nowadays it could be anything. It can be a book, it can be a pen, you know, or things just flying off, things that you may not want, okay, from birds flying along. So these things are always kind of dropping down towards the earth. And that is an observation that we can see, right? So we start to question it, okay, what's happening here? Now, of course, it's not the only observation. We have many, you know, you can start questioning why you're hearing my voice or why you're able to read the captions or something else, right? So that also happens, obviously, in your natural world, okay, maybe if you're watching this, but coming back to this apple falling down, Okay, so that could be a question. 
Now, what we technically now start to do, you know, once we do have these wonderful questions in hand, then we start saying, okay, so if I have my kind of observation that I would see this apple and then I start questioning it, well, then I'm going to start to make some kind of a guess why it happens, right? So now as you're going through and now we have moved ourselves quite a bit along the scientific process. So, you know, we have a lot of research papers, research books. Um, there's a lot of people that study various concepts. So what, you know, we might want to be able to do is, you know, we might want to be able to research, okay, in some particular way. Why does that happen? So we can figure out, right, kind of the reasons why an apple now falls. And that's something that you kind of learn within physics as you're going along. Maybe not on the first day of class, but as you move forward. And, you know, so we don't really need to run any more experimentations on that, okay, in order to find things out. So we can research it and then we can probably come up with some good answers. But imagine this was not actually the case. Well, Newton, nobody really knew at that time what was happening. So, you know, he would do his own research and kind of tinker around, maybe ask people or, you know, start to think about. And he would think of some kind of a hypothesis, which is really an educated guess. Now, educated in the hopes that you have been doing a little bit of research. It is an interest of yours. You know, you have some background within science. Um, and that you can start to make these hypotheses, okay, or hypotheses that you're going along about the observation that you have. Now, those actual educated guesses will probably get better the more and more time that you spend in the field. If you're very new to it, like a student, your guesses, you know, might be kind of arbitrary. You know, you might just be really just guessing and not really having any educated guesses behind it. But that's okay. You know, that's kind of how the science and the scientific method works. So, you know, we have an observation, okay? Then we'll do some research, you know, we'll make some kind of an educated guess, okay, within here to try to see, is that true? And then what we try to do is, you know, we'll try to have some kind of experiments or maybe, you know, mathematical reasoning um, for our guess that we made. So, you know, within here, Newton might say, well, let me just start dropping these things and maybe take a step backwards. You know, what kind of a guess do I want to make? And maybe one of the first guesses was, you know, like not necessarily that it's the gravity that's pulling something down, that, you know, most of us now are aware of. But, you know, maybe Newton was saying, well, how fast is this thing falling down? You know, so like, can I measure it in some way? And is there a pattern? You know, if it's a bigger object or a smaller object, are they falling more or less at the same speed? You know, are they speeding up? So those are the kind of things that you might be hypothesizing on. So you might say, well, I think that they are actually falling at a constant speed. Okay. Um, and, you know, we're kind of near the Earth's surface. Um, and then you can create an experiment and then just check and actually do measurements on that. All right. Are they all falling at the same experiment? Okay, or at the same speed in here through this experimentation. So that would have been leading us okay, along the path of observation. We got some questions, we create some research, we make an educated guess, and now we're gonna test it. Now, our experiments might validate it. So, you know, okay, you know, maybe it is that I am seeing these objects falling at a constant speed, right? So I'm not really speeding up, but they're just moving. But now if you, kind of know, okay, you will notice that objects do actually speed up. So, you know, our, our guess, our educated guess could be wrong. And what we might do is, you know, so we might refute it, and therefore we might also refine it, right? So we might either validate, okay, we might refute, maybe it's wrong, and then we might want to be able to refine it. So this might take us back, right? And then we might say, hmm, we got to kind of create a new guess here. That's what scientists do. And this loop, okay, as you're going through, so you might, you might be shocked or not, this actually keeps looping and looping and looping and looping, okay, sometimes for a very long time because our observations, we may not have the technology to be able to actually solve whatever we're interested in 
yet, right? It hasn't been developed yet. So maybe it's put on the back burner, but if you're lucky, you know, you might refine it once, okay? Maybe make another guess, now say, okay, I think that the objects are speeding up. Can I just measure, right? And maybe they're speeding up at the same rate, right? So maybe they're accelerating at the same rate, you know, can I, am I gonna be able to see that? Do I have the tools to measure that or at least approximate it in some way? And so maybe at some point you might validate that so that indeed, you know, objects that are falling, at least when they're near the Earth's surface, okay, they are speeding up. And it turns out that it doesn't actually matter, okay, on what their mass might be, right? Or so what their weight is, which is interesting, okay, as you're going through, especially very near the Earth's surface. And you might kind of think, okay, so now I have this experimentation, it looks like it's validated, you know, is it gonna be repeatable, right? So that's kind of the goal, right? To be able to repeat these things and see it. And then, so you might have some results. So, you know, eventually you might say, okay, well, these experiments now le are leading me to some results. Maybe we call these results some, you know, some theories. Um, so that's kind of a nice special word, okay, that we use. Uh, which basically are just explanations. So at the moment, that might be the best explanation that we have, okay, in terms of something which is falling and we want to talk about its speed. And as time goes on, as maybe more scientists get involved, you know, more and more is being found out. And now you're not only just interested in speed, maybe now you're thinking about what the reason for that is, okay, what is causing this to actually move, right? Okay, so because if you put something, you know, if I put something on a table, well, it doesn't really fall through the table, you know, so it's kind of staying there. So it starts to bring more questions, right? And that's the beauty of science. As we kind of sometimes answer one question, it might lead to, you know, 10, 15, 20, 100 others, okay, and so on. And this process just kind of keeps continuing. Now, these results, theories, and explanations, you know, as I said, it may lead to new questions, okay, that you have um, as you're going through, and then, you know, as you kind of can loop around in here. So you're noticing that indeed scientific method, sure, you can have observation, you start to question, you know, you do your research, your education behind it, and you make some guesses on why things happen. Then you run your experiments to try to see if those are true, most often than not, they won't be. Okay? And you're going to have to do quite a bit of refining um, because things don't take a day. Sometimes, you know, if you're lucky, you know, a week, a year, okay, sometimes they take centuries. As you know, you know, we have gone now quite a bit of time and we've pushed our technologies forward and various things that we know about the natural world, but there's still many things that we have no clue about, right? So we can still keep going. And then after your experimentations, you know, you can come up with some results and theories. And what I would want you to kind of take out from this scientific method and why we go through science, that there is a process, right? So there is kind of steps and checklists that you have, okay? It, it tries to match and, you know, um, kind of prove, okay? Or disprove through experimentation that this indeed is true. And then, you know, it eventually may lead to some results, theories. Now, those theories might just be statements, so qualitative statements, but sometimes they're quantitative. So sometimes you can have formulas that now form, and you definitely do study that in physics where there's a lot of formulas, which are the results of experimentation that we have done, all right? Um, but lastly, I would want you to know that even if we come up with results and theories, so they might be... Okay, ideal for the case that we have or the time frame, but they might change. So why or how things were happening, or at least the explanation we have, okay, as time and technology develops, we might say, oh, we were kind of wrong. You know, those formulas were semi-right, you know, they allowed us to do certain things. But as we have learned more, we might say, oh, we have to refine this a little bit further. And then it comes up and new questions and new research, new experiments. And then the results might be a little bit altered. Okay, and so things in terms of, you know, things falling down near the Earth's surface, you know, we kind of are, are confident, okay, in that particular world. But, you know, you start moving away from the Earth, you know, you start going another 
places and so on, right? You start talking about either very big items, okay? Um, or very small and small items in a very small scale, then things kind of start falling apart and then we start scratching our head again, okay? But that's the beauty of science. So that is in a nutshell, you know, this scientific method and how you go about and trying to think of the process of trying to come up with the formulas that you study, you know, the periodic tables that you go into in chemistries, okay, um, and all the various tools that you need from math, right, so that you can do these experiments. Well, that's why math is kind of needed because those are the tools that we very often utilize for experimentation. They may not be necessarily physical experimentation. Sometimes it's pen and paper where we actually do mathematics. But finally, as a result, what you want to see is that things are actually repeatable. So if you're going to explain something, you want these things that once you have your result in theory, um, it will hold true if you would run the experiment again. So in the future, you know, anytime we would drop something, we want to be confident that it's going to be falling down, right? Um, and then the explanation still holds. So those are repeatable processes that we want to be able to have. And that's kind of the key, right? We want to be able to run the scientific method, create results, theories, and explanations so that we can predict the future, all right? That's kind of the idea that we would want to be able to get to. All right, so that is it for the scientific method, okay? Welcome into your science, physics, or whichever course that you're just beginning, okay? Happy watching. We'll see you in a future video.